Hey, it's Joey from TechNet Edge. I'm here with Ward Ralston. How are you, Ward? How's it going, Joey? Glad Good. to be here. All right. So, tell everybody about yourself, what you do. Okay. Oh, well, uh, shall we look in right there? Hi. Yeah. Uh, my name is uh, Ward Ralston. I'm the Group Product Manager for Windows Server. So, essentially, uh, I own Windows Server Standard Enterprise Data Center and Itanium Editions for Microsoft here. Just a small job. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, pretty big in on. scope. Yeah, but I love Windows Server. You know, I've uh, I've been uh, an IT pro since 1992. You know, I uh, my first job was in the in the Navy actually, uh, running the computer repair lab at the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey. Helped us for the Navy, baby. Yeah, yeah. I remember when we got our first Pentium computer in there. It was uh, ah, <laughs> yeah, crazy. Yeah, the people were lined up to run their uh, mathematical problems over the weekend on the Pentium. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Very cool. So we've got some good news today, a pretty major announcement. Why don't you spill the beans? Yeah, well, uh, as you know, today is when we mark the RC milestone of Windows Server. So the release candidate milestone is pretty significant internally. I mean, that's when you know, pencils are down on the code, no new features are added. We feel that you know, we have a product that is what is going to be the final product. And so this is our last and final phase of testing. It's our indication to customers that now you know you should be going seriously evaluating this product for production use. So Windows Server 2008 R2. First, let's talk a little bit about why an R2 release. Oh, that's great. Yeah, you know um, it's interesting. Windows Server was actually the first R2 release ever at Microsoft. And when we back in 2003, we looked at these 18 different out-of-band releases that we had, like the Group Policy Management Console. You know, is a is a good one. And we looked and we had all these out-of-band releases and our customers didn't know, you know which ones they could consume, which ones that were important, which ones weren't. So we decided to have an R2 release for two reasons. One is to aggregate all of these great features that we're building outside of the, you know, the major releases and roll them up into a, a product that adds value to the, uh, the initial flagship release. Um, but the real reason that we uh, uh, you know, galvanized on an R2 was to be more predictable to customers. You know, it, you know, is the next version of the OS coming out in three years? Is it six? Is it two? How can I do any planning of my IT infrastructure without knowing when the next version is coming? So starting with 2003, we have been, and proud to say, on a regular release cadence. So every four years, we promised a major release. And every two years uh, after that, we'd offer a, a minor release that complements that. So it, it's, that's one reason, right, is predictability to customers, you know, it's important for them what to consume, but it also allows us to refine on features that were in the flagship release. So when I think of Windows Server 2008, I think of the work we did with quick migration. And now with R2, we're developing on that and introducing live migration, which gives us, you know, the, the same experience that you would get with, you know, like VMware's vMotion, except in the box, no cost, right? Uh, it also allows us uh, the flexibility to adapt to industry trends. You know, when Server 2008 was released, you know, we had, you know, a, a multi-core chip, you know, two processors on one. That was huge. But by the time, you know, that R2 releases, you know, we're going to be seeing, you know, upwards of eight processors on a single chip. And, you know, we've seen some, you know, early reports that even way beyond that. Um, yeah, so we needed a, a way to adapt to industry trends, hardware trends as well. So the R2 release gives us that flexibility. And that's one of the things that, you know, you'll be seeing in the R2 release is, uh, you know, we're, with Server 2008, we had a 64 logical processor support. That's going up to 256 logical wow. processor support. Yeah, yeah. I want that box under my desk. Yeah, we actually showed that uh, under your, I don't think it would fit under your desk, let alone <laughs> in, uh, in an office. Yeah, but we demonstrated that at, uh, at uh, WinHEC uh, back in October. We had a, a 256-way Itanium machine. And, you know, right now the only application that can harness all that power is SQL, the next version of SQL coming out, which is R2, codenamed Kilimanjaro. Yeah, but that, uh, that t is able to address all 256, horse, uh, 200, 256 processors. Task Manager took up the entire screen. Yeah, That's all awesome. those. Yeah, it was cool. Totally geeking out. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the new features um, that, that IT pros should really care about that, that, are, that are in R2, some of the work that you guys have, have gone through yeah. to, to really kind of make this release really <clears throat> stand out. You know, when I, when, I think, you know, when I think about the IT pro, I think about you know, my, my uh, days as an IT pro and what made life easier for me, and a lot of that boiled down to management. You know? sure. And there's a lot of big management things we're doing, and there's a lot of little management things that just make your day-to-day -day life easier. Um, for example, I think one of the biggest things that's going to you know, keep an IT pro at home in their bunny slippers administering the servers is PowerShell. 
So we've offered some powerful remoting capabilities, right? So we you know, can now work with WinRS and WinRM over firewall friendly ports to administer a machine no matter where it is. Um, but one of the things that we're introducing with PowerShell, and more specifically PowerShell 2.0 in R2, is hundreds of commandlets designed with IT administration in mind. Um, so what you're going to see is commandlets for every major role in the server. I think we're up over 240 commandlets right now that we're putting in the box to make that day-to-day -day administration easier. And one of the things also that we're doing, which is we're, we're, we're testing it out with R2, and you're going to see that as we look you know, to you know, Windows 8 and future versions, is we're actually building our MMCs on top of PowerShell. So one of the things that's new, and I, you know, a lot of people don't, there's a couple things I can tell you a lot of people don't even know about yet. One of them is the Active Directory Administrative Center. So what used to be Active Directory Sites and Services, Domains and Trusts, uh, and uh, Sites and Services, Domains and Trusts, and Users and uh, uh, Computers, is now the Active Directory Administrative Center. So we worked with the PowerShell team, uh, we worked with the management team, and our user interface team to create a new console that municipifies all three of those uh, prior um, MMCs into one. And the cool thing is, is this MMC is built 100% on top of PowerShell. So much like Exchange, when you're sitting there and clicking through the UI and administering users in Active Directory, it's actually building that PowerShell script up in the background based on the commandlets that are in the box. And we're not doing anything fancy, but it's building up that PowerShell commandlet. So when you hit OK or Apply, it executes that PowerShell script against Active Directory. And, and that's just the, the first, the first uh, generation, if you will, of what we're doing. That's going to be the way you're going to see server administration being done moving forward. So everything that I can do through the GUI, I can exactly. execute with commandlets in PowerShell. And do I have to be, see, one of, one of the, the problems I had with PowerShell initially and in coming from an IT pro background yeah, yeah. as well is I got to learn all this WMI code. I've got to learn all this stuff just to get the things to run. Is it yeah. made easier with these commandlets? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, even, even if you're an IT pro who, you know, may not be the scripting guru, you know, you can still leverage PowerShell through things like the Active Directory Administrative Center, right? And still be able to, you know, reuse those scripts for one-to-many management later. And, you know, it's not just, and one of the nice things about PowerShell, too, is there's a huge community behind it. So even if you're not the guy who knows how to write that, you know, command let that maps all the network drives or whatever it may be, you can go to powershellcommunity.org and, you know, leverage the work that someone's done before you. It's always good. Yeah, and you, and you know, uh, that, that's kind of like one of the big things, you know, that makes your day-to-day -day IT pro life easier. And there's also little things, you know, that we, you know, when we, when we go up, you know, and do our keynotes and things like that, we talk about the big shiny object. But there's also little things, like we now have an, uh, an Active Directory recycle bin. So if you accidentally delete a user or a group, you don't have to go in safe mode and do an authoritative restore. You simply just undelete that object from the AD recycle bin, which is pretty cool, you know? That is, that's yeah. really cool. <laughs> that's really cool stuff. Um, you mentioned administration in your bunny slippers. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have in, in, in terms of, of that? You know, a lot of the world is, is going to, to remote computing. Yeah, Are there new yeah. features in R2 to really kind of enhance that? Yeah, you know, one of the things that we need to address is, you know, the, the, the tra traditional DMZ. You know, that usually there's this line drawn at, you know, at, you know, the private IP addresses in the public and say, this is us, this is them, right? And the reality is that that has been eroding and dissolving gradually over the years. And truth be told, the internet is the new network, right? And we need a way where, you know, as we look, you know, to people working remotely or people, you know, outsourcing uh, their administration, we need to find a way to, uh, you know, logically segment our network over the internet. And one of the technologies that we're introducing in R2 and Win7, this is a, a true better together technology, is direct access. And what direct access for the, you know, if, um, if you haven't heard anything about it yet, it's a way for us to maintain a connection to the corporate network without establishing a VPN. So much like, you know, when you bring up an Outlook client, it connects over firewall friendly ports and connects to the exchange server and it syncs and the end user has no idea how that magic's happening. That's the same kind of secret sauce we're putting in Windows Server proper and in and, and the client. So no matter where you are, at Starbucks or at home, as soon as you power on that laptop, it's making that dynamic connection over firewall-friendly ports back to the corporate resource. And we're doing this in a way that we respect the endpoints. We're leveraging technologies like IPv6 so that every endpoint is unique. We're using uh, IPsec so we have confidentiality 